When thinking about the future of space exploration, there is usually one planet that comes to mind. Mars. Whether it be rovers that have explored the red planet, Elon Musk's vision for a future colony, or even the name of this YouTube channel, we usually get pretty excited about Mars. But what if I told you we might be mistaken? Let's talk about that. As you probably noticed from the title of this video, we are going to be talking about the planet Venus, the second closest planet to the Sun, known for its massive atmosphere and high surface temperatures. But why would we want to explore Venus? It turns out that Venus can tell us a lot about the evolution of terrestrial planets, because it's theorized that Venus could have potentially been habitable in the past. It could have been an oasis in our solar system, but now it's the hottest planet and essentially unhabitable right now. So how did it go from an oasis to what it is today? Understanding this can give us a lot of insight into what we should be looking for in exoplanets around other stars. So how do we go about exploring Venus? The best way to do this is to compare it to exploring Mars. What are the differences between the two? So first, let's talk about just sending a robotic mission to these two planets. It turns out that if we wanted to send a mission to Venus, it would take roughly three months to get there, whereas if we sent a mission to Mars, it takes anywhere from eight to nine months. In addition, it takes roughly the same amount of fuel to go to Venus or Mars, but sometimes it's more efficient to go to Mars and sometimes it's more efficient to go to Venus, just depending on what you want to do once you get there. In addition, if you want to use solar panels, it's actually four times more effective to go to Venus than it is to go to Mars. However, that efficiency of four times starts to decrease as you start to enter the atmosphere of Venus. So, so far it sounds like it's actually easier to go to Venus than it is to Mars. However, some of the challenges start to arise when we enter the atmosphere at Venus. The surface temperature of Venus is 464 degrees Celsius and the atmospheric pressure is 91 times the atmosphere here on Earth. Whereas on Mars, the average temperature is negative 63 degrees Celsius, and the average pressure is only 0.6% of Earth's atmosphere. So you might be thinking, well, Mars is really cold and has a really small atmosphere, and Venus is really hot and has a large atmosphere. So we can design missions to go to either of these places, right? Well. It turns out it's easier to deal with the cold than it is the warmth. Let me give you an example. Let's look at our friend the Opportunity Rover. It was able to survive through the harsh winters on Mars because it had electronics to keep it warm. You see, these electronics emitted heat, which essentially kept it within its operable temperature range, which meant that essentially Opportunity had its own personal heater that it could use on Mars, and therefore it lasted nearly 15 years on the surface of Mars. Whereas if we go to Venus, the first Venera lander had to survive these high temperatures and high pressures once it hit the surface, and it only lasted for 50 minutes. So again, when we compare the cold environment to the hot environment, it's much easier to vibe somewhere where it's colder than it is where it's incredibly hot. That just because it's hard to get to Venus doesn't make it impossible. In fact, researchers at NASA Glenn have been able to develop electronics that could survive the harsh environment on Venus. So why aren't we going? In fact, if NASA really wanted to, they could probably put together a mission and send it by the late 2020s. However, that's not happening. And you might be thinking right now, well, I still prefer Mars over Venus, no matter what you say in this video. And that's perfectly fine. Mars is a truly fascinating planet. But all I want to get across is that Venus needs a little bit more attention. And let me tell you why. The last time NASA sent a spacecraft just to study Venus was in May of 1989, nearly 31 years ago. And you might not know this, but NASA has never landed anything on the surface of Venus. Only the Soviet Union has. Now, to put this into perspective, since May of 1989, NASA has sent 16 missions to Mars, not including two CubeSats. So 16 versus one over the last 31 years. That's a pretty low ratio. 
And recall that it's almost as easy to go to Venus as it is to Mars. I'm surprised that NASA hasn't sent more missions to Venus. That just goes to show how much we haven't gone to Venus in our history, and there's so much more that we can learn. I should mention that there are other agencies that have gone to Venus, the most recent one being JAXA. However, there needs to be more exploration if we really want to understand more about the planet, which is pretty straightforward. But what about the future? It turns out it might be easier to send astronauts to Venus than to Mars. But why? The first reason is because of Venus's gravity. Venus is slightly smaller than Earth, but the gravity is roughly 90% of Earth's gravity, whereas Mars's gravity is only 38% of Earth's gravity. And you might be wondering, what do these percentages have to do with sending people there? And the reason is because some of the largest health hazards of going into space have to do with the lack of gravity. When astronauts are weightless in the International Space Station, they experience a lot of issues, some of which being bone mass loss, muscle loss, even issues with their eyesight as well as cardiovascular system, which could be a major issue. And scientists aren't sure if the same things will exist when we get to the moon or Mars. However, if they're on a planet that has the closest gravity to Earth, then more than likely it would make sense for them to be healthier. So it's interesting to note that going to Venus might actually be healthier for astronauts than going to Mars. Another major health hazard of space exploration is astronauts' exposure to radiation. And here again, Venus has a major advantage. The atmosphere around Venus would protect astronauts way better than Mars's atmosphere would. In fact, it wouldn't even be a problem if you went to Venus. So it's interesting to note some of the comparisons between these two planets. Now you might be thinking Venus is too hot for us to live on. And the answer to that is we don't have to live on the surface. Scientists believe that we could actually fly around in an airship in the upper atmosphere of Venus. At an altitude of 50 kilometers above the surface of Venus, it would actually be just right for human exploration. The atmospheric pressure would be equal to the atmospheric pressure here on Earth, meaning it would feel normal. It would be a little hot at 75 degrees Celsius, but you could wear a heat suit to deal with this. And if you had a supply of oxygen, you could just walk around outside. Now note, at an altitude of 50 kilometers, there isn't a surface to walk on, so you'd have to bring your own. But Essentially, it would feel normal. You wouldn't need a massive spacesuit like you would need on Mars, which is really interesting to think about. So let's summarize. If NASA were to send astronauts to Mars versus Venus, what would the trips look like? And I say NASA specifically because if it was a company like SpaceX, it might not be a round trip mission. But NASA has mentioned time and time again that they would want to send a round trip mission if they were to go to another planet. So let's figure out what this comparison looks like. First of all, if NASA was to send astronauts to Venus, the entire trip would take around a year and a half, whereas if NASA were to send astronauts to Mars, it would take three years. Getting to the planet would take three months to go to Venus and nine months to go to Mars, so already it's taking less time to get there. Astronauts would be exposed to less radiation on Venus, and they would be able to float around on a skyship. Whereas if they were on Mars, they would be able to walk around on the surface of the planet. So ultimately, you could see how Venus could help reduce some of the health risks, a shorter mission, help NASA understand how they can operate astronauts on another planet. But at the same time on Mars, there's the major advantage of being able to explore the surface directly rather than flying around on an airship. Now, the last thing that we can mention is what about the far future? colonizing either one of these planets. And this is where I want to leave it off to you. Would you rather live in a geodesic structure on the surface of Mars or in a cloud city-like environment on Venus? Let me know in the comments below. If you'd like to learn more about the future of space exploration and discoveries that are happening on other planets, consider subscribing to this channel. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like. But with all that being said, Thank you for watching and I hope to see you in the next one.